an announcement on sanctions. And as always, I will be back after to answer your questions. Thank you. Today, the Trump administration is continuing its efforts against the government of North Korea. Despite multiple UN Security Council resolutions imposing international sanctions, the government of North Korea continues its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. Today, Treasury's Financial Crimes Enforcement Network has found the Bank of Dandong to be a foreign financial institution of primary money laundering concern under Section 311 of the USA Patriot Act. This bank has served as a gateway for North Korea to access the U.S. and international financial systems, facilitating millions of dollars of transactions for companies involved in North Korea's nuclear and ballistic missile programs. The United States will not stand for such action. This will require U.S. banks to ensure that the Bank of Dandong does not access the U.S. financial system directly or indirectly through other foreign banks. This action reaffirms the Treasury Department's commitment to ensure that North Korea is cut off from the U.S. financial system. In addition, the Department of Treasury's Office of Foreign Asset Control has sanctioned two individuals and one entity for their continued support of North Korea's activities. While today's actions are directed at Chinese individuals and entities, we look forward to continuing working closely with the government of China to stop illicit financing involving North Korea. We are in no way targeting China with these actions. We will be meeting with China and other countries at the G20 next week to further our efforts to cut off North Korea's illicit activities. North Korea's provocative, destabilizing, and inhumane behavior will not be tolerated. We are committed to targeting North Korea's external enablers and maximizing economic pressure on the regime until it ceases its nuclear and ballistic missile programs. And with that, I'd be happy to answer any questions. Uh, thank you very much, uh, North Korea. Recently, uh, the congressman uh, introduced about the uh, North Korea travel bans. Uh, the, do you, uh, I mean, do your uh, Treasury Department have any guidelines for the North Korean Travel Ban Act? I have no comments on that today, although I will say we will continue to look at a range of options uh, as we are very serious about them stopping their activity. Can you quantify the financial activity that you're being, that you're trying to stop today and the access, direct and indirect, to this particular bank at the U.S. financial markets? Okay, well, this is very significant since this is the first bank that we've cut off under this and that we will continue to look at these actions and continue to roll out sanctions. As I said, in this case, it's millions of dollars, but we are committed to cutting off all illegal funds going to North Korea. You explain how it works, you explain how it works Mr. Secretary. Yes, okay. so when we put sanctions... What they're doing now and what you're trying to stop. This them. bank will not be able to access the U.S. financial system either directly or indirectly, so it's a very significant action. You made, you made clear that this was not a punishment against China, but obviously the White House wants to be putting pressure on Beijing to take action against North Korea. Are you satisfied that China will see it that way and with what China is doing currently against North Korea? Well, I think, as you know, President Trump and President Xi have had very productive conversations about North Korea, and we appreciate their work and hope they will continue to work with us. Notwithstanding that, we are taking these actions to show the seriousness in which uh, we, we are going to deal with this. In the back. Thank you, Mr. Secretary. Can you talk more about the link between this specific bank and the government of North Korea? We're trying to get a better picture of what exactly they were funding in North Korea. Yeah, I'm not going to go into the specifics of that because it does involve certain intelligence. But again, I can tell you we have very specific intelligence. And uh, again, we will follow the money and cut off the money. Mr. Secretary. <coughs> Would you be able to explain to us, uh, I know you did the research, the actual um, economic impact this is going to have on the North Koreans 
and how that economic impact ne negatively may uh, cause them a change in their position. Well, I think, as you know, in Iran, the sanctions were very effective, and that's what's brought Iran to the table. And we will continue to work with our allies, and we will continue to speak to people at the G20. We are firmly committed to work with other nations to cut off illicit financing. Thank you. Mr. Secretary, was China given a heads up in any way about the action that you're announcing today? And you used a term that um, in, in your statement. Is China an enabler as it relates to North Korea? Uh, again, I'm not going to comment specifically on our behind-the-scenes conversations. We've obviously had very productive conversations with them. Again, as I said, this is not directed at China. This is directed at a bank, as well as individuals and entities in China. And again, whether in China or there anyone else, we will continue with sanctions. Can North Korea simply move their, their assets from, from this particular bank to another bank in China? Could, are, are they uh, again, if we find other activity, we will sanction other entities. Nobody's off limits. Quick follow-up on China. Can you just characterize whether you think China's doing enough? Because last week the President tweeted, while well, I greatly appreciate the efforts of President Xi in China to help with North Korea, it has not worked out. At least I know China tried. It sounds like he was giving up on China, has he? I don't think the President is giving up in any sense. I think we will continue to work with China and everyone else. The President is firmly committed that we will cut the money off to North Korea until they behave properly. Any asks of the South Korean leader today? Two different topics. One, how much do you feel that China can actually move the needle on North Korea? Two, in terms of tax reform, uh, you say you've got 100 folks over there roughly at the Treasury Department dealing with that issue. Are there any contingency plans in place in case health care doesn't get done? And thirdly, Janet Yellen, how much is the administration Seri is the administration seriously considering her to remain on as Fed chair? Well, that, that's an awful lot of questions. So let, 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 me, let me work backwards. Um, again, no decisions have been made in regards to the Fed chair. Uh, Gary Cohn and I will at some point make recommendations to the president, but no decisions have been made on that. Um, in regards to tax reform, I think, as you've heard Gary and I say, we are very committed to get tax reform done this year. It is one of the president's top priorities for economic growth. I think the people of America understand that, that we need economic growth, and we're committed to doing that. Uh, I expect that health care hopefully will get done, but uh, regardless, we are committed to getting tax reform done. And you had so many questions, I forgot your first and, and one. And how much, well, let me actually follow up with you uh, on tax reform, if you don't mind. Uh, Paul Ryan had said today that things are on track. Um, why should the American public believe that things are actually on track with when, what we see what's going on with? health care reform, and it seems like the timeline keeps getting pushed. Oh, well, why shouldn't the American public believe it? Of course they should believe it. We've said that. Speaker Ryan has said that. Chairman Hatch has said it. We are all 100 percent committed to getting tax reform done this year. Mr. Secretary, 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 um, in February, you received a letter from lawmakers suggesting that the Treasury Department should consider sanctioning the Bank of China. My question to you is, um, have you reconsidered that idea? Do you think that idea is on the table? And then the second question I had is about the debt ceiling. My understanding is that the debt ceiling um, drop dead time for you all is October. Does that give Congress additional time in your mind, or would you still like them to act uh, earlier? Uh, I haven't given any specifics in regards to the drop dead date. What I have said is that I hope that Congress acts before they leave. Yet uh, we do have contingency plans if they don't, so that the market shouldn't be concerned. Uh, but again, I think for the benefit of everybody, the sooner that they do this, the better. And as it relates to banks, again, I think as you've seen, we've taken very significant action today. We will continue to take very significant action rolling out additional sanctions on North Korea until they stop their behavior. Secretary, uh, one question on indirect access to the banking system. Are you aware of other banks that are providing similar access to the North Koreans, to the international financial system, and what other banks are you prepared to take steps against going forward? Again, let me just say, we have a team of people, both in Treasury and working with the intelligence agencies, and as we see other banks or individuals or entities, you can expect we will continue to roll out additional sanctions. This is something we take very seriously. We will be having discussions with our counterparties at the G20. This is a big priority of ours.
Secretary. 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 Secretary
in relief of the Greek financial crisis. Yeah, well, let me just comment. Uh, the, the IMF commitment to, to Greece was quite small. Um, I'm not even sure that Greece are necessarily going to use that, so I think the significance was really more of a stamp of approval. And uh, again, there's no direct cost to the U.S. or the taxpayers. And uh, we're supportive of the IMF, although we'll look at our contributions to the IMF like we look at all contributions very carefully and making sure we're spending the taxpayers' money properly. In the back, yes. Clarify which entities are being uh, sanctioned because the paperwork that OFAC sent out also includes Dalian Global Unity shipping to Chinese individuals, does not mention the Bank of Dandong in that paperwork. So is it four total entities? Two so there's, entities, there's two, two different actions. There's a, uh, there is a FinCEN action, action against the Bank of Dandong, and then there are the three OFAC sanctions, as you've pointed out. A release from which part of Treasury? You said FinCEN? You will, you will say FinCEN. There will also be a release on the bank. Okay. And did you communicate this in advance to Beijing? That Again, I'm not, I'm not making any comments on our behind the scenes, how we can communicate. Tax reform. Um, you're a mathematical man. Uh, what are the chances that we get a 15% corporate tax rate or a 25% corporate tax rate in the final bill? L let me just comment. Tax reform is a pass-fail exercise, okay? And we're going to get this passed for a plan that's good for the American public. So we are working closely with the House and the Senate, and uh, we're going to get a bill that's passed that's going to be great for this economy, great for Americans, putting people back to work. Is it a revenue neutral exercise? Is it a revenue neutral exercise? How is it possible uh, for uh, reducing the uh, funding source for the health care to lead to uh, uh, lower premiums and uh, expanded uh, coverage? Um, I I again, I'm, I'm, I'm here primarily to talk about sanctions and tax reform, but I will comment again on health care, although it's not my primary area. Uh, the health care that's been in place is a bad deal for the American public, okay? And that's why a lot of people aren't using it, okay? It was a giant tax hike to the American economy, and premiums have been going up a ton. So we're looking at making the system more competitive so people can actually afford it. Sir, 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 sir. We heard from your counterpart at the Department of Homeland Security that airports all over the world have to step up aviation security because there's this threat. This is the product of a, a months-long discussion within the interagency process that resulted in yesterday's decision. I'm wondering uh, if you, sir, are convinced that the potential security risk are you satisfied that the security risk outweighs any potential economic risk if, for example, certain airlines are cut off or certain airports are cut off if they don't comply? Well, let, let me just say, uh, I, I can think of nobody better than General Kelly to protect our country in this position. Um, again, I've had the opportunity to discuss these issues with him at the National Security Council. I'm not going to comment specifically, but let me make it clear. The safety of the American public is our utmost concern, and we will never, ever put economic issues, okay, where we will risk the lives of the American public. Mr. Secretary, Mr. Secretary um, on tax reform, are you going to be revenue neutral? And if the CBO and JCT say you don't get the growth or the revenue, what are you going to do? Okay, again, let me just first say there will be complete transparency when we come out with the plan. We are in the process of listening sessions. We've literally met with hundreds and hundreds of CEOs, think tanks, uh, various different groups. Uh, I was over at the House twice today talking to people at the House of Representatives in groups. Uh, we've been at the Senate. We're listening. And as we develop this plan, we've said we're going to have a responsible plan that is paid for. And we do believe in dynamic scoring, and we're going to take that into account. Secretary, the, uh, the GDP for the first quarter came out today at 1.4%. It was slightly better than economists anticipated. But during the campaign, the President repeatedly promised to have growth rates of between 3 and 4%. Two questions. First, what, uh, how much of that 1.4% is attributable to the actions of this administration or inactions? Uh, and secondly, when are we going to start seeing the 3 to 4% growth rate that the President promised? So again, I think I've been very clear on what our projections are for growth and that we believe that we can get to 3% or higher GDP. 
We've been very clear that that's not this year, that's not next year. It will take some time to scale in. Our projection over the 10-year period is actually 2.9%, which I think is quite conservative, scaling up to three and staying there, which I think both the President and I believe we can do better than 3%. So our projections in the budget are quite conservative. Uh, I think that to the extent we can get health care passed, to the extent we can get tax reform passed, to the extent we can roll back regulatory issues, which we're working on very carefully, both in financial and in energy and in other areas, uh, we are very comfortable that we will hit these growth projections. I'm going to take two more questions and then uh, I'm going to have to turn it over to the superstar over here. No. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, the president said before um, that if China is not going to help solve the North Korea problem, then the U.S. will. Um, he's made it clear that he doesn't think that China is currently doing enough. So where does he stand on the U.S. taking unilateral action? And is there a deadline, uh, such as G20, maybe an ultimatum, or you know, a deadline for which the U.S. would need to, would sorry, that China would need to do more? I think the President has made it very clear that if there are deadlines, he is not going to advertise those deadlines. So I am not going to make any specific comments as to whether he has a deadline or if he has a deadline, when it is. That would make absolutely no sense. I can assure you we will have conversations with our G20 counterparts about this next week. And uh, we've been having these conversations and we will continue to do more on this. One, one, one more question. You're right here. Legislative snafu, but it does appear that uh, the House and Senate will pass sanctions legislation uh, related to Russia. Uh, includes a broad grant, a range of sanctions. We, I don't think we've gotten a straight answer from the White House on whether the president would support that. Uh, do the, does the administration support that? Is Treasury prepared to implement those sanctions? Well, let, let me just be clear. I, I, again, not only the sanctions that we have on North Korea today, uh, we have sanctions on Iran already. We will continue to put more sanctions on Iran around their ballistic missile and in other programs. Uh, you've seen we've used sanctions in, in other areas. We will continue to use these. So notwithstanding anything Congress passes, I can assure you this administration and the Treasury Department will use sanctions to the maximum amount available by law. We don't need Congress to tell us to put on more. We're going to do more whether they tell us or not. not but anyway, we look, we look.